Welcome to the program, coming tonight from Perth, where we'll explore a colourful week in the local politics. Colourful being a bit of an understatement. But first, Labor's crisis in New South Wales, following a major rift at its state conference at the weekend, which now threatens to split the party and the Yemma government. The unions and the rank and file overwhelmingly rejected Premier Morris Yemma's plan to privatise the state's electricity generators. Late yesterday, the Premier defied his own party, announcing his government would push ahead with the sale anyway. For a leader whose popularity is at an all-time low, this unprecedented defiance of ALP policy may yet prove to be political suicide. Even more significantly, it's a clear signal of profound changes in the Labor movement and the dwindling influence of unions in the Labor Party. Deborah Cornwall reports. What we've seen here at this conference is essentially a train wreck. This is about ego, it's about power, but not political power. Let's be very clear about this. 85% of the people in New South Wales are opposed to privatisation. It's an unprecedented split between a Labor government and the party that put them there. The hard men of the New South Wales Labor machine going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Premier Maurice Yemmer over one of the most sacred principles of the Labor Party, keeping public assets in the hands of government. What we've seen here at this conference is a fundamental conflict between the political arm of the Labor Party and its industrial arm, the union movement, which created the Labor Party. At stake is the Yemen government's proposal to privatise the state's electricity supplies. A complex deal which the government says will deliver the state a windfall of up to $15 billion. Money the government says is desperately needed so it can deliver on critical services. And that's the $15 billion choice we face today. Shame. Shame Just like families paying a mortgage, the state has a credit limit. Order. The Premier deserves to be heard in silence. When Premier Yemmer fronted the state conference on Saturday, delegates were in no mood for his awkward speechifying, laughing openly at the boast that his scandal-riven government was back on track. Our progress may be unsung, but it's real and it's happening. <laughs> Rail on time running. <laughs> Throughout the day, party heavyweights worked frantically to stitch up a last-minute peace deal. <laughs> but in the end, nothing could stop the carnage is that it's a sell-off and a sell-out. Mate, what's the point of having a conference at all if it doesn't bind our parliamentary leaders? Thank you. If we're not prostituting ourselves for a few dollars, then I'm a bad judge, let me tell you. We expect Labor governments to look after the workers that get them elected and the people that vote for them who rely on an essential service. One minister after another got up to face their hostile comrades. And that makes me concerned, delegates, because that says to me there's a lot more ego than reason behind today's standoff. I gave a solemn promise not to do what I was told by trade union bosses, delegates, but to do, but to do. But their message read more like a threat. And if you don't give us permission... In short, without privatisation, the lights would go out in New South Wales in five years. And even more alarming, without money for the sale, the lives of small Today, children here, would be in peril. Right now. We can make a decision to secure the state's energy supply and we can make a decision to care for the most vulnerable people in our community. To do any less, to do any less is to fail those people who look to labour for support. I think it's rather despicable for uh, senior people within government to get up here and talk about the disabled, people, the, the disability and the infirmed and say that unless there's privatisation of electricity then these services will be compromised. I think that's disgraceful. 
But the real venom was reserved for the principal architect of the privatisation plan, the larger-than-life treasurer, Michael Costa. What I've got to say to you here today is there's dishonesty after dishonesty in this debate. Dishonesty after dishonesty. The man the unions call oh, Dr no, Evil oh, no. seemed to revel in the abuse, taunting delegates for their hypocrisy. Falsehood number two. Jobs will go offshore. Jobs will go offshore. Half the people in this room are wearing yellow T-shirts made in China. <laughs> in China. The privatisation plan was overwhelmingly rejected by seven to one. But yesterday, the Premier decided to press ahead anyway, acting in open defiance of Labor policy. I'm uh, advising that we are proceeding down the path that the government had started to secure the state's energy supplies, to secure our economic future. The move left shock party chiefs scrambling at the close of conference. Delegates, we are on the edge of the precipice. All of us in the party officers group, right and left, have tried to avoid this. An emergency resolution was forced through. This time, it was a direct order to the Premier to sit down with union delegates to discuss a compromise deal. All those in favour of the resolution? In reality, the Yemen government has been in a state of paralysis over the privatisation deal for months. Either unable or unwilling to do what Labor leaders have done for the past 67 years, sort out their differences behind closed doors. Well, I think people got an insight on Saturday uh, with the Treasurer's ranting uh, as to what we've been going through for six months. The fact is it's been very difficult to have a sensible conversation. It's why the conference took the decision that it did to reject the proposal, but also say the government ought to be sitting down negotiating with the unions and other stakeholders. It's a matter of uh, embarking on an exercise of persuasion. There's any number of people who have spoken to are capable of changing their minds, as long as the people speaking to them are also capable of changing their mind, so it's a dialogue, not a lecture. Many party insiders believe the Stoush has laid bare one of the greatest challenges for new Labor, how to accommodate the unions when their influence in the community is in decline. Clearly the erosion of the union movement's influence in society and also in the Labor Party has been occurring over many years. The union movement really um, is still a powerful voice inside the Labor Party, um, the, the Labor Party is, I suppose, struggling to modernise itself. The unions are struggling for relevance. But while unions still make up 50% of party membership, no government, especially a deeply unpopular government, can afford a falling out with key party power brokers like Union's New South Wales chief, John Robertson. We've got a situation where members of the Labor Party think as individuals they can rise up above uh, the, the Labor Party and see themselves re-elected, they're kidding themselves. By late today, the party was already closing ranks. But the war, it seems, is a long way from over. It's not a case of uh, not listening to the party members or, or the conference. A, a resolution at the conference that just says, don't do anything, is not something that I can stand up as the Premier and say, well, people of New South Wales, I'm looking you straight in the eye and our solution to our electricity supply challenge is st stop in our tracks. Well, it could go on for quite a while yet. No one knows, uh, this is not, there's no script. There's no script writer. There's no puppeteer uh, in control of events. I've heard from the Premier, he is prepared to sit down and start discussions. I think that's a positive step. Uh, there's a lot of hard work to be done and it's not going to be easy. Deborah Cornwall on Labor's woes in New South Wales. The situation here in Western Australia is